please join this prelude and settle our hearts and minds for worship. Thank you so much, Gail. She prepared that uh, piece, especially for John Tittle. It's a Spanish piece, and so we're hoping that he's enjoying that online. <laughs> Welcome to Worship at Emmanuel. We're so glad that you're here. Today, Sunday school started, and so it's uh, very exciting to have things back and rolling again. Thank you so much, Gail, for playing these last three weeks. We so appreciate you being here and blessing us with your music. Guests, we're so excited that you're here, too. Uh, if you could grab a um, welcome bag at the back, just as our way of saying thank you for worshiping with us, and let, your, let us know your contact information and everybody else by filling a connection card out. Uh, that way you can update us, email, mailing prayer concerns, anything that you have to share with us. This morning, John Tittle and his family are recuperating at home uh, and quarantining from COVID. Um, keep him and his family in your prayers. We're hoping that he'll be back next Sunday. Uh, fingers crossed and hands folded, right? Um, we received word yesterday that Larry Tip Tippy will be um, home under hospice care starting, I believe, yesterday. And uh, they don't need anything right now except your prayers. 
which they would really appreciate. And this morning we have a rose on our altar again uh, in honor of Mike Ross. Mike is the son of Howard Ross and the husband of Diane Ross, and he passed away last Monday. Uh, may he rest in peace. Our hearts and our prayers go out to Diane and Howard. Be sure to check out the community life because there is a whole lot more going on in the life and ministry and mission of Emmanuel. Let's bow our hearts and our heads in prayer. Gracious and holy God, thank you for the blessing it is to gather and worship you. We pray that every word and thought and deed in this service will be pleasing and acceptable to you. We pray that your name will be lifted up and honored in our worship and in our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior and our companion. Amen. Please stand for our hymn. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. <laughs> Praise the Lord. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, and for God's loving kindness is everlasting. Who can speak of the mighty deeds of the Lord, or can show forth all the Lord's praise? How blessed are those who keep justice who practice righteousness in all times. Let us worship the Lord God. May God be praised.
In Christ alone my hope is found He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in hell. This babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross, as Jesus died, that wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. On him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. His body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since Christ has lost its grip on me, for I am His, and He is mine, brought with the precious blood of Christ. Yeah. is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Now you may be seated. We know that nothing is able to separate us from the God of love in Jesus, in Jesus Christ. Let us in freedom confess the wrong we have done. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to use these next few moments of silence to be still in God's presence and the quiet of your own heart. Amen. Sisters and brothers, hear, receive, and rejoice in the good news. In Jesus the Christ, through his life, death, and resurrection, our sins are forgiven. May God be praised. Thanks be to God. You have nearly three. Oh, now I can talk normal. Now you have three hundred. That is well, awesome. I have three hundred. I have two hundred and ninety-eight. Wow. That's. And I'm already collecting, and I'm collecting rocks outside and inside. Very cool. Those are amazing. And you're collecting rocks. What are you collecting? She is collecting Pokemon cards, rocks, and pebbles. What are you collecting? She's collecting space figures. I bet there's people out in our congregation this morning that also have some amazing collections. One more quick one, okay? Go ahead. You have 60 mega DXs? No, EX. EX, excuse me. Very cool. That is awesome. We will talk about that a little later. I wanted to show you, I also started a collection many years ago, and I collected quarters from all 50 states. And we did this with our kids, and we were able to pop them in, and each one is a little unique and different. And if, if you, if you, they're really cool. If you look at quarters today, you will see that most of them come from states. Where's the first one? Uh, it's up there. It probably goes alphabetically, but I didn't study it that well this where morning. Is, where was the um, one? That we will. Can we? Ours. I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to show you this a little bit after church. <laughs> my vast <laughs> collection and my collection of quarters, although it's a little bit older, is worth about twelve dollars and fifty cents. I collected whatever came out, and they came up with even more. But um, some collections are very valuable, like rare stamps rare coins, and maybe artwork by famous artists that people collect. And $2 bills, I got a few of those. And some collections, like family photos are, um, and seashells and pebbles, aren't as valuable, but they're special to you because they hold memories of you and your family. Jesus warned his followers 
not to collect, not to worry about collecting their treasures on earth. Well, they can break, they can get lost, they can get stolen, or just wear out or get old. <clears throat> treasures on earth can't last forever. Jesus encouraged his followers to store their treasures in heaven. And in heaven, and let's think about some ways that we can store our treasures in heaven. Um, one way might be to help others. What's another way? Bring them with you to church? Oh, bring them into heaven with you, which would be maybe share about Jesus right now while you're on earth and tell your friends about Jesus. And we can listen to God, obey his commandments, and you can come to church. You can invite friends to church, vacation Bible school, church camp. What else? Um, you could also, you could also like, like, you, you could also kind of like try, try to burn your fire, your, burn, like light your fire, burn, burn your treasure in the fire, and then that would go up to the heavens. The little sparks would go up to heaven. Possibly there's an idea for us. So uh, Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there also is your heart. Jesus was saying that if you concentrate on collecting treasures for heaven, your heart will also be there. And does that sound like a great idea, that we should do these good things on earth? Thumbs up if you agree. Good Sometimes you can find little coins. You're absolutely right. Um, let us pray. Ready? Dear God, help us to collect treasures in heaven by helping others, share Jesus with our friends, and come to church and church activities. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Thank you. If you're uh, three to five, you can go to time together today. I'm so used to doing other stuff now that I, sorry. Good morning. <laughs> Let us pray together. God, you have blessed us in so many ways. Your spirit has inspired those who wrote the Bible and enlightens us to hear your word fresh every day. Help us to always rely on your promise in scripture. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today's scripture is found in Luke 12, verses 32 through 40. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions, give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning. Like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready. 
even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at any hour when you do not expect him. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Sorry. What would you do if you found out that there was buried treasure at your home? You knew it was somewhere buried maybe in your backyard. I think we could all agree that we would search and search, digging up holes all over our yards, looking for the treasure. And what if I told you I knew that there's a treasure at your home? I can actually guarantee that there's a treasure at your home. Well, in our scripture today, God reminds us that you, each and every one of you, are God's treasure. In our scripture today, Jesus says, don't be afraid, little flock. How many times has Jesus had to tell his disciples, stop worrying, just relax? I mean, the phrase, don't worry or don't be afraid, can be found in the Bible 365 times. For those of us that need some reminding, that's one for every day of the year, literally. And the first people I thought of... um, when I, when I heard this, do not be afraid, little flock, is our children and youth. I love the image of Jesus speaking to our young people today as they head back to school this week and last week. But he's also speaking to all of us as his children. The verse reminds us, have hope, don't be afraid. God knows your worries and your fears, every single one of them. And your God walks with you. Your God doesn't stay at home when you head off to school or work or the store. He walks with you. Our world is buzzing by, built on anxiety. Faux faces pass us by, some weary, some puzzled. Some just exhausted, and some questioning what what it all means. Our world thrives on people setting higher and higher goals, and we worry all day and all year about whether we can even reach them. And if we do, we set new ones, right? And if we don't, we feel we failed. Was this really how we're supposed to live? I mean, Jesus' warnings in Luke this morning indicate that this has been going on for a very, very long time. This summer, I was able to attend a mental health first aid training. It was geared for those working with people ages 4 to 24 years old, and it was an amazing thing put on by the county and SAMHAC, Southern Arizona Mental Health. In the last two years, we learned mental health crises have increased threefold. We learned about the cycle of knowing knowing that worry and anxiety causes health issues, which we know that's fairly practical, right? But it also produces the prospect of people worrying about worrying, creating this downward spiral or hamster wheel of worry. We forget we're God's treasure. How can we remember that we're God's treasure amidst all of this worrying and concern that we have? Jesus comes to us with the message that God changes all of that. God sweeps this busy world with love and power so that all humans made in God's image loved dearly, or as John Cheek would say, extravagantly, 
may relax in the knowledge that God is in control. You are such a valuable treasure to God that worrying is not necessary. Jesus also refers to the treasure in heaven, as in other places in the Bible. This isn't just a reference solely to the afterlife. It's the sphere that God created for us here and beyond. As people of God, we can work to create heaven on earth, as some might say. Working towards a peace-filled community with love, hope, and respect for everyone. A place that reminds me of a story. One day, a fisherman was lying on a beautiful beach. Imagine a beautiful beach. With his fishing pole propped up in the sand and his solitary line cast out into the sparkling blue surf. He was enjoying the warmth of the afternoon and the sun shining, warming him up, and the prospect of catching a fish. Another person, dressed in business attire, decided to go to the very same beach to kind of relax from a hectic and busy day, relieve some stress from that work day. And the person noticed the fisherman sitting on the beach and wanted to find out why are they fishing instead of working in the middle of the day? You aren't going to catch many fish that way, they said to the fisherman. You should be working rather than lying on the beach. And the fisherman looked up and smiled, and he said, and then what would my reward be? And the, well, you can get bigger nets, and you can catch more fish. And then what will my reward be? Well, you'll make money, and you'll be able to buy a boat, which will then result in larger catches of fish. And then what will my reward be? Well, the busy person was really slightly irritated at this point, and said, you can buy a bigger boat, and you can hire some people to work for you. Well, and then what will my reward be? Don't you understand? You can build a fleet of fishing boats. You could sail all over the world and let all of your employees catch your fish for you. Huh. And then what will my reward be? Well, now really mad, shouting at the fishermen. Don't you get it? You can become so rich, you will never have to work again. You can spend all your days sitting on this beach, looking at the sunset, and you won't have a care in the world. And the fisherman smiled up and looked up and said, and what do you think I'm doing right now? <laughs> Our real treasure in life is working and living that God is glorified. Being generous and kind to others, we're fulfilled as human beings because that's what we were created to do. When worries pop up, cast them out. Put them in an imaginary drawer. And remember that God's treasure hunt to find you, to encircle you with his love and peace. But sometimes it's hard to remember the treasure that is you, right? I mean, how can you remember to remind yourself day after day? So I have some ideas for you. You can make a have done list instead of a to do list. Consider all of the things that you have done, the things you've already accomplished. Some days it might be as simple as I showered, and we get that. But other days it might grow to bigger things, such as reaching a part of a goal or a whole goal. Don't forget the part of the goal is important. Give yourself credit as you would a good friend. Another one, review what you're watching and listening to. A few weeks ago, I had this feeling that something was not right. Like I had forgotten something, or I had offended somebody, or I just, just something just wasn't right, and I could feel it. I could feel it in my gut. 
And I asked my family and my friends, have I forgotten to do something? I think Kate was about to cast me out. Have I forgotten something? Have I offended somebody? Did I offend you? No. Carrying this feeling was wearing on me. It was affecting my sleep. I wasn't able to sleep because I was worried about worrying. <laughs> and then I realized I was watching two shows on Netflix. One, uh, this family was going into bankruptcy and they were losing their whole farm. I don't even own a farm. And the second one is that um, this family was having all this family drama, which I don't have any family drama right now. And so I was internalizing these shows because literally I was probably watching too many episodes at a time. But I later listened to a podcast about it, so I know it's right that I should just relax and not watch too many of these shows on TV. I was internalizing all of it. Another thought is, how about a five-minute meditation? For example, take five minutes, even set a timer, and picture yourself as the youngest child that you can remember being. Maybe it was playing in the grass or catching fireflies. Picture the sunshine. Imagine its warmth, which isn't too hard here in Tucson. But feel the grass, hear the laughter. Maybe sense the popsicle that you, you can remember eating. What would you say to that child self? A part of you is still that child. We just don't let them out very often. The last one is find a mantra. And I've got a good one for you. You are God's treasure. Write it on a post-it note. Put it on your mirror so you see it every morning and every night. Make it the screensaver on your phone or laptop. You are God's treasure. This coming week, remember, I knew what was at your house. I knew there was a treasure at your house. Take some time to remind yourself that you are God's treasure. Amen. Let us bow our hearts and heads in prayer. Thank you, God, for all that you have blessed us with. We return to you a portion of that which you have given and entrusted to us. We pray that by these gifts and other gifts, the sick might be healed, the hungry might be fed, the homeless might have shelter and comfort, and the hopeless might find hope and assurance in your love. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. We will now collect our tithes and offerings.
to thank you for it. <laughs> Creator God, it's good to be gathered together today. Our souls yearn for it. We spend our weeks rushing around with our to-do lists and our calendar reminders. And then finally, Sunday arrives. We step through the doors of this cool, quiet sanctuary, and once again, we are on holy ground. So while we're here, God, we want to offer you all our prayers. We want to empty out our pockets and shake loose every prayer that has crossed our minds this week. We want to dig down within ourselves and leave no stone unturned, giving you every prayer of gratitude, every prayer of joy, and every prayer of heartache our lips have murmured this week. We'd like to thank you for our morning coffee, for the way the sun comes through our windows, and for home-cooked meals. We thank you for rain in the desert, for the music that makes us want to sing, and for the fellowship of friends and family. We thank you for the cookies at coffee hour, for the way sunsets paint the sky at dusk, and for this Sabbath day rhythm. Help us to remember that these simple things, although simple, are more than enough. So we thank you. We'd also like to hand over the prayers that weigh heavy on our hearts. We long for violence to stop, especially senseless gun violence that tears apart families and whole communities. We pray for our brothers and sisters who have seen their homes washed away by flooding. Clean water is not a guarantee in all parts of the country or the world. Folks in our own backyard are being priced out of their homes, struggling to make ends meet in a fluctuating economy. We have loved ones in the hospital in fear of yet another infectious disease. The list goes on, God. We worry about all these things. It makes us want to hoard our treasures for ourselves, fearful of scarcity, terrified of worst case scenarios. Unravel our fear. Hold a lamp to our feet. Bind up the broken parts of our lives. Move like a mighty wind through this room. Help us see beyond materialistic gains and turn our eyes to the beauty that you have dipped this world in. God, we are so grateful for you, for your word, and for the hope you give us. Hear our prayer as we lift our voices in unison to pray the words your son taught us to say, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand for our closing hymn.
Friends, as you leave this place, go in the love of God, the Father, the grace of Jesus, the Son, and in the power and peace of the Holy Spirit. And don't forget, you are God's treasure. Amen. 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 Thank <laughs> you.